everyone, it's V and welcome to another transatlantic accent practice. Today we will be talking about very random things because I got great suggestions from a couple of viewers and I'm trying to incorporate these questions and desires, I suppose. So yeah, the first question was about how I speak so clearly. And I've always been somewhat anal about my pronunciation because I want people to hear me and I don't like mumbling, um, especially if, if I present something. Also, I studied design, right? And we had to, in, during university, we had to give pretty much weekly presentations on things. And a lot of the people in university were international students. And if you mumble, they'll have a harder time understanding you. So I always made it a point to speak clearly so people can understand me. Another thing is, and this is a tip for you, I um, grew up singing a lot. And one of the vocal exercises was putting a cork in your mouth and then trying to speak with that cork between your teeth. This is a fantastic exercise and I would recommend it to anyone who feels like they're mumbling because it forces you to open your mouth a little wider and to exaggerate the movements that your mouth makes. Yeah, it'll help you speak more clearly, clearly. And I highly recommend that. Spartan B312, there we go, asked, can you do a video on insults? So let's start with a video on insults. These are some of my favorites. The first one is fiddlesticks. So to make this one sound more transatlantic, I want you to really enunciate those Ds, really hit those double Ds. So it's fiddle, not fiddle, like don't hit it with the middle of your tongue, but more with the tip of your tongue. Fiddle, fiddlesticks. Also the I is less of an uh, but it E, so fiddlesticks, fiddlesticks. Don't message me now. I don't actually have that many friends, so it's quite surprising to hear from anyone right now as I'm filming a video. Fiddlesticks. The next one, I actually read that exact line. For, someone asked me to um, do a voice in a podcast, which was super, super fun, and I really enjoyed doing it. So holla at me if you have a nice podcast and you would like me to do a voice for that. It's Heavens to Betsy. So if you really are surprised about something or frustrated, you go, heavens to Betsy. The, so this one really lives from the, not intonation. God damn it, I know that word. The ups and downs, I, I cannot come up for the life of me. I cannot remember the word that I'm trying to come up with. So I want you to go up and down. I want it to be very, very short. So I don't want you to have a melody, then pause, and then sort of continue. I want it to be up and down and very, so the, yeah, a lot of melody in the, in, in the voice, even more than you naturally would incorporate. So heavens to Betsy. The Betsy is a Betsy, so it's soft. It's a Betsy, not a Betsy. This is sort of reminiscent of like more Southern accents. And I think this gives the transatlantic accent a softer quality, at least in my opinion. I'm not an expert. What do I know? So the next one is a strange one. I only found it in one of the lists, but which did I already say that I didn't fact check these, but also it doesn't really matter because they're just insults. It's not going to harm anyone, is it? So bullcorn bull as in the bull and corn as in maize so bull corn the double l in bull is a bull so you really want to use the tip of your tongue again million bull yeah million is actually a very good word to practice this with so you don't want to say million you want to say million not million but million so instead of pushing more of the middle of your tongue against the roof of your mouth, you, it's 
further towards the tip of your tongue. Million. Bullcorn. Bullcorn. I actually took one accent lesson about this accent. It was after, let me just say this in the accent, it was already after I had accumulated some information about the accent and I just wanted to confirm that I'm not teaching people ridiculous things that aren't true at all. So I took one accent lesson with a wonderful dialect coach. So I believe that most things I say are true about the accent anyway. So. And this is a word that I learned there. It's poppycock, which means nonsense. Poppycock. So again, it's like Betsy, poppy, poppycock. And really say it quickly, it's poppycock. Nonsense, really. Oh, the next one sounds wonderful because it's just so, so old timey. Bejabbers. What in the bejabbers are you doing? Excuse me, what in the bejabbers do you think you're doing? That's also one that just sounds fun and because it sounds so fun and old timey already, there's not that much that you have to do with it. Except drop the R. It's not bejabbers, it's bejabbers. Bejabbers. Here again, if you tend to sound too English, if you have a natural RP accent, Try to go a little towards the American pronunciation. So it's bejabbers. Somewhere in between there. More towards the English accent, ideally. Make a tree and leave. Since this is a full sentence, we can play with the rhythm and the melody. So the music of that sentence. Make like a tree and leave. A tree. Tree. So I suppose you can choose, you can choose how you want to pronounce the word tree. If it's a tree or a tree, I think one sounds more English. So I will try to steer away from that for myself personally. You can make a different choice. So it's make like a tree and leave. Or I'll feed you a knuckle sandwich. A knuckle sandwich. What a beautiful expression. Knuckle, knuckle sandwich. Try not to go too far back in your throat with the knuckle. So knuckle. Knuckle sandwich. I'll feed you a knuckle sandwich. Feed you. This is another, um, th this just randomly came up. So it's very very important to listen to your self-talk because <laughs> this sounds like I enjoy hearing myself talk. What I mean is even like especially when you're practicing a new accent you will make mistakes and it's good if you pick up on those mistakes and then correct them. So knuckle sandwich. I got distracted. I don't know what I was talking about. So ah oh, the next one's fun. Sugar tit. Sugar tit. Drop the R. It's not a sugar tit. It's a sugar. Sugar tit. You can again say, uh, use a E. Yeah, there we go. An E sound instead of an E uh sound. So it's sugar tit, not sugar tit. Sugar tit. So your mouth is a little more closed. Sugar tit. And we have reached the last expression on our list of expressions. Ah, ah, <laughs> it's so if you find yourself being too religious to say the name of a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in vain, say Jiminy Cricket, Jiminy Cricket, Cricket, Jiminy Cricket. So um, same with Heavens to Betsy, it's Jiminy, Jiminy Cricket. That concludes our list of swear words. So now we can move on to the comments. Tyler Monfredi asked or said, I think it would be fantastic if you were to read some of your favorite YouTube comments in the accent as a shout out to fans and a way to challenge your fans comments. I'm not quite sure how it would challenge you if I read your your comments. See, I uh, accidentally inserted a, an American either. Your comments. But 
I shall do it anyway because it seems like great fun. Femi Onifade asked, how would you say we make our own misery in the accent? This is exactly how I would say it. We make our own misery. You can really string the our own together. Our own. We. We make our own misery. Free Your Mind said, Now I need a video of how to get over the fear of speaking a transatlantic accent in public. Just use it ironically. I believe that's how the, the youth does it. I'm a millennial myself, so that's my approach to it. Just use it for comedic effect. And if people don't like it, well, <laughs> Jiminy Cricket, feed them a knuckle sandwich. No, don't, don't punch people because they don't agree with your sense of humor. It's, it's not a good idea. You're a literal lifesaver. Oh, flannel, flannel lemon said, you are a literal lifesaver. I do not believe that's how you use the word literal, but thank you. I'm a dungeon master who needs to chuck away a few accents for gameplay. This is exactly what I need. Wonderful. I received actually many messages from, or well, comments rather, from people who are dungeon masters and needed this accent for some reason. And I'm glad I could help you out. Oh, I love this comment so much. Luisa said, Time to start sounding smarter because I'm an absolute fool. Oh, I do relate to that, Luisa, for I am too an absolute fool. Coca-Cola Hoff. No, sorry, Coca-Cola Hoff. I got a little excited there. Coca-Cola Hoff. <laughs> this is a great comment and it doesn't quite read as funny as it... No, it doesn't quite... I don't know how to say that. If I read it out loud, it's not quite as funny as just reading it. So, sees duck outside, me an intellectual goose. This refers to the fact that I'm very, very a great fan of the goose vowel and the way they pronounce it in the transatlantic accent, goose. Because in other, there's quite a bit of variation to it. So, uh, in some accents it's a goose and in other accents it's a goose. Goose, goose. Oh, such a beautiful, such a beautiful sound. Goose. Newsroom. Very, very characteristic of the accent. Letitia Heron. I want to learn this so one day when I have kids I can pass it along to them and they'll be the weird little kid with a transatlantic accent. I love this comment because it's very evil. Don't do this to your kids. I'm, I'm serious. Do not. They will get bullied so bad. Children are mean. Shantzi Buck says... Holy ish. Holy ish. I suppose you mean sugar snaps or shit. You look like you could be the third Jones sister. Quincy Jones's daughters, Rashida and Khadida. You sure Quincy ain't your daddy? I am quite positive Quincy ain't my daddy because my father is one of the whitest men that I've ever seen or met. Did I say my father is? That's a mistake. It's my father is. I have to string those two together. Again, correct yourself. My father is one of the whitest men I've ever seen or met. My mother isn't, but my father is. Esthete, Esthete Artemis says, I know this has nothing to do with the transatlantic accent, but how do you say fart without laughing? Like I laugh or smirk every time I hear that word. Fart. It's because I'm humorless. I'm German. I do not have a sense of humor. There's so many comments of people saying they, they enjoy watching the videos and I'm really, really thankful for that. And I couldn't really pick out my favorites out of those because they just all make me happy. So thank you so much for being nice in the comments. Lillian Miramontes Jr. said, it's my favorite gentle them. Well, it is indeed. Hello. It's so wonderful to see you here. Oh, we have arrived. Wow, that was a half r rolled R. Arrived. We have arrived. We have arrived at the last comet, which is a German one. So I shall read it in German and put the translation in the captions because I want to. This is my video. <laughs> so Geraldine Greenwood says, Die Videos sind super und ich habe gleich in deinem Schrank erkannt, dass du Deutsch bist. 
Ja, das ist ein, einer, den ich von eBay Kleinanzeigen im Landhausstil erworben habe. Und es hat zwei Tage lang gedauert, um das blöde Ding dunkelbraun zu färben. Oh, es hat so lange gedauert. Aber jetzt sieht er besser aus. Also es hat sich gelohnt. Danke für deinen Kommentar. That was the last comment. Thank you so much for watching. You can like and subscribe. I will put out videos not very regularly because I'm bad at keeping a reg regular schedule with this. But I enjoy making these, so I will make more. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I don't think the word fart in itself is that funny. Actually, coincidentally, coincidentally, there, there's no connection there. Random fact. <laughs> in Chinese, fart, the word fart, fang pi, means to speak out of your ass, to, to speak bullshit. So I really like that expression.